that today we would go through a video which explains the functions in C programming. A function is a block of code that performs a specific task. There are times when we need to write a particular block of code for more than once in our program and this may lead to bugs and irritations for the programmer. So making use of functions, we will be able to save both time and space. So when I said that a function is a block of code that performs a specific task, what do you mean by that? Take for example, a calculator. It has so many different operations on it, but you choose only that operation which you want to perform at hand. Say for example, addition. After performing that specific task of adding two numbers or maybe three numbers or maybe umpteen numbers, the output or the result is generated which is performed by the add function and this result is returned back to the user. Now functions can be of two kinds. One is the predefined function and the second is the user defined function. We have already used predefined functions so many times. For example, you have used functions like scanf, printf, etc. There are some other functions that you have also made use of in string handling that is strcmp, strcap, strcpy, etc. In this topic, we would be learning to write user defined functions. These user defined functions are any function which you or me or any other user would be defining while writing a program. Using functions have many benefits such as it brings modularity in a program it also helps us with code reusability and it makes debugging and editing very easy. Why do I say that it makes debugging easy? Making use of functions introduces modularity because of which the bugs creeping up into a program reduces. Take for example, you have to write umpteen lines of code. While you're writing umpteen lines of code, if you do not uh, adhere to modularity or you do not adhere to writing functions, you would not know where exactly a bug would be creeping up. So by making use of functions, you have your code in a very modular fashion. Also, this causes less irritation to a programmer. Writing programs in by using functions, we are making use of divide and conquer strategy. What is this divide and conquer strategy? Just like how you have your calculator, a calculator as a whole with so many other integrated operations helps you out with all of the arithmetic operations or you can say a scientific calculator that you use. It has so many operations on it. But this calculator was built up considering small individual modules. For example, the add module was built first, then the subtraction module, then the multiplication module, and then all these modules were put together. So we came up and made up the entire calculator by dividing the huge portion into small pieces these small pieces were manageable then you know tackling the entire issue of the calculator at hand so we conquered the entire scientific calculator problem by dividing this entire thing into small operations so each of the individual operation was considered to be as one module which was more manageable. 
say now to throw more light on what exactly I mean by modules. Let's have a look at what I mean by modules and divide and conquer. I have one program over here which you can see right from line number 1 to line number 28. Now this entire program does addition and subtraction. But I have broken the whole code into three modules. This is my first module from line number 3 to line number 8. Line number 10 to line number 15 is my second module and line number 17 to line number 28 is my third module. However, I can say that line number 17 to line number 28 is my main module, that is my main function, wherein I am making use of the add function at line number 23 and I have not made use of the sub function yet. Please remember that I can call the add function and sub function only when I need to use them. I also would have just used this add module and sub module in the main function but that would just be dumping this add and dumping the sub in the main therefore violating the concept of modularity. Instead of dumping all these lines of code and all these lines of code in the main and making main one big huge program, I considered in separating out the sub and putting it into one module here and I considered separating the lines of code for add and putting it into a separate code over here. If I had just dumped everything into one big main function, that wouldn't be a good coding practice. Okay, so I have tackled addition and subtraction by building modules for addition, building a module for subtraction and making use of the add module in the main function. Mind you, main is also a function. Line number 17 will be the first entry point of this whole program. So now let's see what all makes up a function. A function is made up of a function header. A function header consists of all this. A function is also made up of a function body. So in short, I can say a function is made up of a function header and a function body. So let's see what all makes up a function header now. The return type is the first thing that you would be specifying when writing a function. What is this return type? Consider the calculator. If you had chosen the add function to add two numbers, say for example 3 and 5, it would give you an answer. The answer in this case would be 8. Now, this answer what it is giving you is on the output screen so it's returning you back some output or returning you back some answer therefore i choose to put my return type as int in this case similarly if it calculated the addition of 3.2 and 5.2 the answer would be 8.4 in this case i would use float as a return type so the return type could be of different kinds. It could be int, it could be double, it could be cap and it could be void. So depending on what is the data type of the answer which you are returning, that particular return type or data type will be the return type. But there could be cases wherein you are not returning back any output but you are just printing something in the main in the function that you have defined. In that case, when you just have a display message to be printed and not returning an answer, you may choose to have a return type as void. In the next few slides, it will be clear what I mean by using void as a return type. Next, I have a function name. 
function name is any valid identifier next after that i have my opening round bracket and within this i put something called as the argument list the argument list may or may not be empty depends on how you want to attack the code at hand however more clarity will be thrown on this in my later explanation also before i go ahead this entire thing return type function name open round bracket close round bracket and within that the argument list this entire thing makes up your function header now let's go and see what is my function body a function body starts exactly at the time where you have your opening curly braces the moment you start off with your opening curly braces you introduce something called as a local variable declaration now these are variables which you introduce only during that particular function definition for example if i wanted to compute the sum of two numbers or maybe to hold the result i would have a local variable declaration as int sum over here now this sum will be recognized only within this function definition however that particular variable is born only when you introduce it and is known only for that particular function definition it dies after closing the curly braces so you can say its life is only between the opening curly braces to the closing curly braces after you put your local variable declaration in place you write your statements or the block of code that you want your function to perform after writing your block of code you return whatever you want that is in this case you'll be returning the sum and then close your function body but make sure you place semicolons wherever required now from this curly brace to this curly brace this is your function body and this is your function header the function is made up of function header and function body